All right, thank you, Ray. Welcome everyone. This is the weekly TSC call. It's uh, open to everyone to join and uh, participate in. Uh, there is, however, two requirements to doing so that I must go through. Uh, first is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed. And the other piece is the code of conduct that governs all our participation in, uh, in uh, Hyperledger, which is linked from the agenda. So speaking of the agenda, before we get into the actual meeting proper, I saw somebody add a couple of items, and I'm sorry, I don't know the person, but uh, do we have somebody to speak about this next step on decentralized access? Bobby, I know you're involved in this, I believe, but you didn't add that, did you? Are you involved in this? No. So, yes, I am this not. person, Darman. Does anybody know Darman? Okay. All right. So, unless that person shows up and can explain why this is on the agenda, I guess we'll have to ignore it somehow. I, you know, I always welcome input for the agenda, but this came up just an hour ago or so. And I was like, uh, what is that about? I'm, you know, I'm open to addition, but I still need to understand what it's about at least and how much time we need to allocate and so on. So um, it's not clear to me what to do with this at this point. Um, and this is Daniela. I think this is uh, someone from the telecom special interest group. Um, so let's see if they show up. I'm not quite sure who that is. I haven't spoken to them. Uh, David Boswell on the team is the POC for that, but um, let's see if they show up. Okay. All right. Thank you, Daniel. All right. Is there any announcement from anyone? I don't have any. Um, since we had the meeting uh, cancellations and you said that there was a possibility of having a uncanceling one of the meetings, are you going to wait on that decision or? So we, yeah, so in theory, this is the last call. No, we have no. one more call next week. Right. right. So we have one more call next week. So we'll see next week if we need one or feel like having another one. Otherwise, the assumption at this point is next week is the last call for the year. Cool. Okay. All right. So moving along, we had two quarterly reports posted. Um, grid just came up earlier, so I don't suspect many people had a chance to look at it. Uh, I, I'm happy to carry it over for the next week if there's any questions. Um, the, um, the other one, Explorer, was posted a while ago, uh, so most people have reviewed it. And in either case, there was no prompt from the team to have anything specifically discussed by the TSC. But uh, is there any questions or anything people want to discuss about either of those reports? Okay, if not, then uh, we can leave it at this for now. And again, I mean, at least uh, grid, which just came up, we can have it next week again. So people will have another chance. And I mean, you're always welcome to say, hey, there was this report the other day, I didn't have a chance, but now I have a question, right? So this is not, this is an active prompt. Prompt. It's not meant to limit what people want to bring up by any means. Okay, so then we can move along. The, the, the main agenda item is a follow-up to the discussion we started on the last call, where, you know, Arun did some archeological work in going back to, you know, uh, all the different issues related to project life cycle and evaluation, reporting and so on. And uh, he had put together this summary and RFC page, which we looked at last week, but, you know, 
it was a bit of a, a, a mixed bag of different things. And uh, we said, okay, there's some interesting stuff in there, but we need to kind of divide this up into smaller chunks that we can uh, tackle. And uh, so I, I had actually a separate chat with uh, Arun and um, a few days ago, and I, you know, I prompted him again saying, hey, do you have a chance to do this? And so he came up with this list, which I think is closer to what we can indeed look at. And uh, he has now posted it as a comment to the summary page. So if you scroll down, right, it will show up. And my goal for today is not so much, you know, I, I saw there are, quite, there are several people here, namely three, I think, Dano, uh, Hart, and, and uh, Tracy started responding to the, some of the proposals that were there. My goal is not so much to dive into any one of those points specifically now, as much as you know, going over the list and trying to decide what is it that we actually want to put officially on our agenda you know, to, to be tackled. And so the process I'm suggesting is, you know, we go through this list, looking at a fairly high level, not so much about the solutions, but trying to understand if, does that ask the right questions is really what I'm trying to get to, right? We don't want to get too much into the answers, but it's like, what are the right questions? We had that discussion, you know, that question raised several times when we were talking about the rollover proposal and we're like, okay, what problem are we really trying to solve? And so this is another take at this. And I think there's general agreement that, you know, we can kind of, you know, separate ourselves from the, the rollover project proposal or issue as such. It's more like, you know, uh, let's step back from that and more generally speaking, look at the situation we are in and what are the problems we are seeing that we should tackle. So that's really my goal is to go over this today and see what we say, no, we're not going to tackle this. Oh yes, we should add that to our list. And then for each of those, we should create a separate issue page under the decision log. And, uh, and then we can start looking at the proposals to solve these problems. So um, does that sound all right? Everybody's on board with the plan? So if we are, then I suggest we start going down the list. So for instance, the first one, there was this question of, and Arun, do you want to speak? Uh, I can do it, but I don't want to be the only person talking, so. That's fine, Arun, you can talk about it. So, um, so this is the same list, which we discussed last time, so the summary and the RFC. I tried to break them as questions to solve instead of the directly giving the problems. And the way we can look into this is if we think this question is something we need to worry about, then we can take it up further. So this is just one of the proposed solution. And depending on further feedback comments, we can improve on these things. If we think this question is something not relevant for the TSC, then we can drop it at this stage. Okay. So let's get through the first one because I think, you know, and I, I shared that with you privately when we had a chat. It's like, so the first one, you know, touches on the idea of, you know, projects having to start with lab in the labs, you know. And I mean, I think today that's kind of our default answer when people come and say, hey, maybe we should start a project on this. We say, yeah, you're welcome to go create a lab for this see how that plays out. But we specifically had a discussion on making this formal or not before. And I saw Tracy in one of her comments did the digging and brought up that a pointer to this. But we actually decided formally, we have a recording of a resolution not to require project to start with the lab. That's the third bullet there in Tracy's answer. Thank you, Ryan, for scrolling to the right spot. So. I want to ask more generally, you know, so my, my, my inclination based on that is, I don't think we want to tackle this question again, but you know, 
the rule of thumb that I've always heard and used in, in, in this kind of uh, you know, situation is we only reopen issues if there is new facts or you know, a, a reason we should reopen that, that you know, something that might make us change our mind. Otherwise, you know, we, we could just reopen issues all the time and they would not go anywhere. So I'm not convinced that the, you know, what, what is the reason we should reopen this if there is any. And please, you know, anyone feel free to, and I understand some of this is also, we have new people, not everybody has all the history and that's totally fine. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting, it, it helps us get all on the same page, if anything, so. Could somebody summarize the rationale of why that decision was made? Uh, can you click on that link, uh, right? See if we have that. No, because this, yeah, the minutes. There's a link to the minutes at least, but does it go into the detail? So there for issue five, which I highlighted a second ago. Right? Yeah. So it begs the question, you know, what's the criteria of when somebody should start as a lab versus a project? Do we have that written down anywhere? I, uh, I had created a presentation when labs was first introduced to kind of talk about the differences between labs and projects. Um, I will go find that link and put it in the TSC chat. Thank you. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, labs was originally intended for experimentation, uh, proof of concepts, things that people wanted to do, but they weren't quite ready to introduce as projects. And so, you know, I think the, the key here, right, is that we want to have uh, labs be an easy entry place, right, versus uh, maybe the challenge that it comes when introducing a brand new project into, um, into Hyperledger under the umbrella. Right. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more uh, that goes into that new project process, given that we've got the project proposal and, and things like that. Uh, the labs was intended to be kind of that easy entry to, to start, you know, building your idea, experimenting with something, um, seeing if other people were interested in getting involved or, or not. Yeah. And for projects, I mean, there is a there is a process and there is a form that you have to fill out. What is it called? The HIP? Uh, Hyperledger Improvement Proposal, I think it stands for. Uh, and, but um, so, and, and it kind of implies some criteria in there because it asks who is committed to this, uh, you know, there's expectation, there is more than one organization behind the proposal and so on. And so we have had the case where there were proposals that sounded interesting and were worth investigating, but didn't quite meet the bar that we expected to meet for projects. So that's how we came up. So we said, no, we're not going to create the projects for this, but we wanted to create a, an area where this work would still happen. That's why the labs were created. So I don't know if we have a, a clear definition of what qualifies as project versus lab, but that's- Anyways, it makes sense to me. I'm satisfied. Thank you. Thanks. Any other we have his hand up. Dave? Yeah, I just wanted to add one other thing that wasn't touched on, which was um, we run a number of mentorships in the summer and we have for years. And part of the reason we wanted the labs was those mentorships sometimes produce outcomes that you wouldn't consider a project because they're not long lived. They're narrow in scope. They've been worked on for three months. There's really no intention to work on them anymore, but we wanted to capture that work because it is useful and could potentially serve uh, future work. Um, so the labs are a perfect place for all of the mentorship work that doesn't neatly fit under one of our existing projects. That's all. All right, thanks Dave. Okay, so back to the question. Does anybody want to lobby for opening this question again? 
of requiring project to start at the lab? And if so, why? So I don't hear anybody wanting to. So if there's no advocate for it, I guess we can skip it. I don't hear anybody screaming at me, so I guess it's an agreement. I, I agree with skipping it next. So the next question then, Aaron, please go ahead. Sure, so this was another thing which came up and also in some of the email this, this was coming up. So this comment was regarding hyperledger greenhouse is so confusing and then do we need a revamp on that? Do we need to relook into it and see it differently? So these were some of the questions which were brought up. I know in last meeting, uh, many of us commented on that this is something not in scope of TSC. We could however help out the marketing team in helping out in help them shape this a little differently than how it is currently. Um, so yeah, do we want to address this now? That do we consider, this? Do, should we look at the greenhouse into something like, hey, we have library projects and some of those are focused on application developers and maybe few of them are only for DLT developers. Maybe not all of them are interested in those projects. Is it better to call them out? So that's what this question is all about. Yeah, thank you. So I, I saw Tracy also pointed that aspect that maybe this belongs more to the marketing team, but Brian maybe can chime in on this one. What, uh, who's, whose job is it to fix the greenhouse on the website? Uh, whose job is it? Um... It's an interesting question. It's something that we've typically uh, owned somewhere between the staff and the TSC. You know, uh, the last time we iterated upon it, you know, we had a couple of rounds between, and, and we do have, you know, for folks who don't know, a marketing committee comprised of uh, representatives from the company to help fund Hyperledger, uh, who we would like to also have on board with how things get represented on the more public facing uh, website, you know, the main hyperledger.org, especially since this graphic goes into presentations and those sorts of things. So, um, it's an it's it's not a well defined process for iterating this particular graphic, but um, it we certainly if 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 this community is unhappy with it, would certainly um, continue to be happy to evolve it further. Um, uh, and then tying it into I think the next question around project metrics, um, I, I you know I think there's certainly the possibility of uh, highlighting certain projects and uh, over others based on based on those metrics. But um, but it's kind of nice to have a static image um, uh, stay steady for about a year. And I think it was about a year ago that we last revised this. So. Um, happy to open that process but uh, it's it this is one of those things it's kind of like a user interface uh, to uh, you know end user interface to a, to a software it's kind of hard to design it by committee right it kind of does take somebody inspired yeah. and, and with some skills to to take a fresh look at it um, but uh, uh, but certainly open to feedback but so I mean there is uh, what I'm trying to get is do is there value in saying yeah the TSC you know, should have that on its agenda to solve this problem, or we just express the desire to you, the staff to- I think if know. the TSC could be more specific than just confusing, um, then <laughs> it would be uh, uh, something actionable, something that we could try to address, right? Uh, and come back to the TSC with a different take. Um, we have 16 projects, right? We're, there's a certain amount of irreducible complexity to what we're trying to represent. And uh, it's not clear that uh, there's there's a, a, an obviously different approach that reduces that confusion. Um, sometimes the confusion can be abetted by better explanation uh, text before and after a graphic or, or, or otherwise. So. Um, perhaps one path is if people have examples of maps uh, provided by other kinds of projects like Hyperledger that they feel do a better job of communicating um, what a, a family of, of related but still independent projects uh, do, then that might be another good starting point. You know, show us an example of something that's less confusing on this front, but represents the same degree of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, complexity to this kind of community. All right, thank you. So I, I think that means, to me, that makes it worth 
adding something to kind of you know uh, to mark that we don't we we actually want to spend a bit of time, if nothing else, gathering specific feedback on what we think is broken with the current greenhouse that would feed the the work for the team to try to revamp it. And I I, I understand the. Just saying it's confusing, it's not specific enough. But I also agree with you, we don't want the whole TSC to design that page. That would be horrible. So I think uh, I'm in favor of having that on our agenda, but more in terms of better specifying the problem rather than trying to solve it. What do others think? Perhaps a subcommittee could go off and look at it. Yeah, we've done that before. We have task force sometimes. We can definitely do that. Task forces, you know, we can see subgroup for those who are not familiar. It's just like, you know, whoever wants to volunteer, say, okay, we'll go offline and work on this, typically through the wiki page. And you just commit to working a bit more on this than anything else. And making sure that we're making progress. And then once the subgroup is comfortable that they have actually hashed out enough of the problem, they can come back to the TSC. I think that's a good suggestion, Mark. Anyone else? I think we ought to have something happen anyway, because this problem is real. It's been brought up several times. So I don't want us to ignore it. Um, so I think I suggested this in chat, but it might be useful to have some kind of diagram that is focused on uh, applications or end users or end use cases uh, that maybe focuses on some of the core platforms rather than the libraries or the tools. Uh, and th this just might make it easier for business people or non-developers to figure out what's going on. No. Yep. So everybody's silent. So I propose to add this question. What is it? Uh, yeah, to add it to our agenda, generally speaking, and then we can get into the you know how not so much trying to propose a solution, but better defining the problem that needs to be addressed. Do I have agreement to go with this? Tracy? Yeah, I I go back to Mark's suggestion of a task force yeah. um, that would go off and do this work instead of having the initial discussions directly in the TSC calls. Um, you know, having the task force come up with something and then come back to the TSC. I agree. I am volunteering for the task force because this has been a problem I've been I've been talking about for a while, so I guess I ought to help out. Anybody else, Arun? I, I agree to that, so, um, and I'm willing to volunteer to help out and sort this out. Okay, anybody else wants to volunteer now? Bobby? Yeah, I'll join that task force with you. Thank you. Anyway, the door is not closed. Anybody can jump in any time. Feel free to just say so. All right, let's move along. What's the next one is about incubation and active forever. Right, I think Brian also touched upon this briefly a while ago. Um, Dano, I see you raised your hand. Probably I'll just complete and then let you speak about it. So yeah. So. Over here, there was a concern or comment made in the previous meeting that a project can be in incubation or active forever, and there is no incentive for them to move from one state to others. And that's why we see many projects, once they enter into hyperledger top level project, not much happens around that. Uh, so this is one of the um, area or one of the way through which we can keep them engaged or keep them seeing through what's happening. So I would suggest that this be part of a sub part of the badging proposal, which is already proposed as a separate topic. 
we could consider this as one of the uh, subtopic in that. Thank you. Yeah, we, we had indeed a while ago already, you know, identified this idea of project maturity metrics, and that's why there is an existing page. Nobody really jumped on this to try to make progress, but it has come come up several times. I don't know that it specifically relates to the incubation versus active being forever. Uh, it's the way you put this, it kind of seemed to imply, oh, this is a problem. Maybe we should revisit that. And I don't think we necessarily want to do that. I think for now we should look at the project matrix and the badging idea. And then once we have a proposal on that front, we could then say, okay, what does it mean for those phases, the status we have? But this could be done as a second step. Dano, you've been raising your hand. So I think this is actually kind of the nexus of four separate problems, um, which is why it's hard to get a hold of. The first one is the names I don't think are very good. Um, they come from an older model from the you know, early Apache days when things went through once and incubation, you weren't supposed to stay there forever, but if we're gonna let people stay in incubation forever, then that's the wrong name. It's too comfortable. It's not, you're not growing something if that's an acceptable final state for project before, you know, while it's in production. So the names, I think, is one issue. The next issue is, I think, um, our current model is a one and done model. You go to incubation, you're done. You go to active, you're done. You don't need to defend that or maintain that level of activity. You know, you can go back to one maintainer once you're active, and there's really no mechanism that TSC has short of deprecating it. There's been talk of people moving people back in the life cycle, but it's uh, never been, you know, there's no, we'd have to invent new processes for that. Um, there's also a little bit of lack of detail. There's a lot of stuff to exit from incubation to active, and there's no way to tell which ones are, you know, seven steps away and which ones are just the final step away. So the badging would solve that. And finally, there's an issue of clarity. Some of these standards in the exit from incubation to active are kind of um, amorphous. And as our experience and Aroha's experience has been, um, dependent upon the whims of the TSC, um, we could get more explicit clarity and the badges would be that. You know, the badging definition would be very explicit, you know, follow these steps to get the badge. Um, so I think those four nexus, and the nexus of four problems is why, you know, everyone wants to, to, to judge one of them. And it's really the interaction of all four of these that's creating this problem we're having in our life cycle that's not really serving, serving us well anymore. All right. Thank you, Dano. Any reactions to this? I, I think what you're saying is reasonable. I, you know, I, th I saw the exchange and Hart, you know, express the worry about, you know, reopening the, <laughs> this, the like exit criteria and having to have uh, to go through this several times is a bit scary. And, and coming up with, you know, purely ob uh, objective criteria is challenging. But uh, I, I think, you know, the names is definitely a reasonable thing to say, to, to look at. I would be open to, you know, say, should we change the names? But in my opinion, you know, I feel like if we had a badging mechanism to already have a better sense and a different way to express the status of the projects, I think we'd be better informed as to whether, you know, we need to have those other labels, which is the status today, and what those labels should be. So. I'm, I'm open to the questions you're raising, but I think these are good ones, but I would say they should be looked at next once we have the project matrix slash badging and, you know, under control. Tracy. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that, Arno. I think the, um, I think we could potentially in, you know, the future get rid of names, right? Of, incubation, active, whatever we're calling them, right? Uh, yeah. I, I think though we cannot do that. And I don't even think we should change the names until we figure out how to uh, do the measurement. And and so I, I think, you know, you opened up that uh, decision log entry and I think we should focus some time on uh, figuring out what it is that we can provide to people to, to determine whether or not something is a project that they want to uh, invest in and, and utilize. 
All right, thank you. Yeah, and I remember Hawk the, brought up this badging idea before project matrix. And the idea is like, you know, when you look at, for instance, what has project stuck in incubation usually is the diversity, uh, uh, you know, criteria. And instead of, you know, just putting everything under this label of active status, you could say, no, this project has all these different badges it's just missing the diversity badge. And that would be more instructive, informative than, than just saying, oh, they're all incubation and you don't know why they're still incubation. Could be just a new project that just started or a project that's been there for quite a while. It just doesn't have enough diversity to graduate to active status. Yeah, so and just to, just to add back to that, uh, Arno, I think, you know, coming back to, to Dano's uh, comment about the fact that the diversity may change, right? After you become active, it may actually go back to not being very diverse. Um, you know, if you had that badge that could um, appear slash disappear as, uh, as the metrics change, then I think that, uh, that solves that question. Yeah. All right, so anybody opposed to having this like project matrix slash badging on our agenda to figure out? And Dano, I don't mean to, to dismiss your, your questions. I, we can raise them now officially or we can table them to later, it's, it's up to you. I, I think badging is a place to start. Once we get the badging, I think we can move on to the names and the life yeah. cycle. And there's also another question um, that isn't quite on this list. What services does Hyperledger provide to projects based on their level? A labs doesn't get audits and incubation doesn't get audits, but ad actives do. So I think that's another thing that needs to be looked at. But I, I agree, I think badging is where it needs to start. There's a lot of, seems like we're getting a consensus around um, building a set of badges to reflect what the exit criteria is and applying those and maybe creating more badges on top of that. All right, thank you. Anybody objecting? If not, we can move on. So next one, Harun, back to you. <laughs> yep, so one more um, concern or probably this is where I see a gap in current process is a mechanism to keep reviewing a project. I know we have a quarterly report through which we can go through what's happening in a particular project and understand uh, different metrics associated with a particular project. But however, what we lack is to, again, this ties back to knowing if a project is meeting all its charter goals or not. So when a project is maybe approved to be a top level project, it proposed certain charters. Char uh, there would be certain goals associated with it. And over here, there is, so this proposal or this question is to ask if we should bring in a review, which is stringent, just like what we would do otherwise for bringing in a new project. Yes, and I think it, you know, it's, what this touches on is, you know, even if we have a badging system, I mean, how often do we update those badges and, I mean, we, it touches on what uh, Dano was talking about earlier, where, you know, today we do, we have these gates, you pass them once and then you're off the hook and the project might actually not meet the criteria anymore, but it's still, you know, in the same status. There is no way to judge that because we never, we never reevaluate those. And there are pros and cons to going down there. I think Hot, I saw Hot was saying, yeah, that's a scary thought. Having to go through this once is painful enough. Having to go again it is not very appealing. I can appreciate that, but maybe, you know, it's, uh, it's worth considering. And by the way, there was also a point made in the comments about, you know, project deviating from their initial charter. I think, you know, and Hard was saying, well, you know, that might be for good. They may not be doing what they were planning to do initially, but they may still be doing something useful. I don't think that's a real problem. It's not a matter of 
you know, preventing people from doing something different as much as acknowledging that there is, they are doing something different. I think there is, there is use in, uh, you know, it's useful to, to have a mechanism that detects deviations and say, okay, if that's the way it is, we should be aware and make that clear that this, they are no longer trying to pursue the initial charter. I mean, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time in my life working on standards where you typically have a pretty tight charter that says what the scope of work is. And when the case like this, you go through a rechartering process. It's not disallowed. It's just, you know, it's not prohibited. It's just, you have to go through this process to make sure everybody understands that there has been a deviation. Anybody, any comments on any of this? So I mean, I know. I know this is Angelo. Uh, it, um, I must say it also for the badges. Uh, I I had this feeling that I, first of all we should assess uh, the cost and the benefits of doing uh, doing these things. Also the, the, about the social. The, I mean, getting badges in and out can produce also stress on projects. Uh, are we really sure that these are good stress? So. And um, it depends on, again, I think the last time we had this discussion about what do we want from this project? We want them to solve problems, real problems, not just provide functions uh, just for fun. Um, uh, that's, I guess, we, I, would, I would see this entire effort to, to move the project in the direction where we want to, uh, where, where we want to go. Uh, and most of everything, if we decide on this, I think we should have a, an assessment of the cost and the benefits of having this, uh, this, uh, these things. All right, interesting point. I think that's a wise uh, point to make. We shouldn't have uh, too heavy a process that discourage people and, and distract people from doing real work. <laughs> and not you worry about the administrative fault and the overview from the TSC. So I think there are people of different inclination in this respect. I mean, Dano, you seem to, in your comments, to be proponent of a system where we do more of an active review and, and change of status, uh, uh, you know, than we do today, for sure. Um, yeah, my, my thought is we should move some of these um, administrative steps and tie them with the quarterly report is, is another thing to help that, too. So when you talk about these badges and all these other review states, um, it's part of the quarterly review questioning. Um, and it's considered then and only then you don't bring it up in the middle of a, of a cycle. Okay. Tracy? Yeah, I, th I think it comes back to why we introduced the quarterly reports in the first place, right? It was because we weren't um, able to see what was happening in the projects and this was an opportunity for us to to get more familiar with what was happening inside of the project, whether or not it was uh, progressing. Um, and I think, you know, we should we should use the quarterly report as a mechanism for, uh, you know, determining the communication between the project and the TSC, so such that they don't become uh, disconnected, right, uh, from one another. All right, thank you. Hot. Uh, thanks. I just wanted to agree with Angelo's point that uh, you know we don't want the the badge system to be cumbersome, and we don't want you know projects to try to think you know oh no my quarterly report is coming up, I need to get these random you know five email addresses to make a trivial commit so that I can get my you know community diversity badge or or whatever or something like that. Um, so I think, you know, maybe it makes sense to not have sort of, you know, binary badges, uh, to have some kind of continuum and to do it in a sort of, you know, objective, but if possible, non-gameable way that makes projects sort of not stress about, uh, you know, not stress about badging or not try to game the badging system. Okay, thank you. Mark. 
Yeah, I'm wondering how much of this is self-inflicted. We, you know, a year or so ago, the TSC said, well, we spend too much time doing, you know, on each project's report. So let's just, you know, only bring up issues that we have with them. And we got rid of the discussions that we'd have that would uncover things sometimes. Um, and then we sort of said, well, working groups don't need to do reports. So that got rid of about half the reports anyways. Maybe we need to go back to doing interactive project reports and that would solve a lot of these type of issues. I don't know. Yeah, so I, without going as far as that, uh, you know, we talked about inviting projects to come to present to the TSC uh, every now and then. And I would hope this is an opportunity for the TSC to get deeper and, and into, you know, the situation of each project. Of course, we didn't talk about making that mandatory, but, you know, I don't know if we need that. We could always ask if we worry, but do you think that would, I, it seems like it, it's trying to find some kind of middle ground between the two approaches that I agree with you to certain degree, we, we detach ourselves from the projects by doing everything offline, but, and maybe lost the opportunity to, to ask more questions. All right, don't see any other anybody raising their hand. So, hey Arno, that, Arno, I can't. So this Gary, hey Arno, hey Arno, it's Gary. Sorry, I can't. Really, I'm uh, I had to get up off my butt and walk around here. But um, so I, I'm raising my hand virtually. Um, okay, go ahead. You know, um, I think I don't know. This always sort of comes back, right? Uh, maybe we're trying to mix. You know, maybe we're trying to mix too many things. Right. So you would have a problem with quarterly reports, right? If you get to a point where you have too many projects, you quarterly reports, just, you know, there's, you know, assuming we, even if we met every week, right. In a quarter, right. That's, you know, 12, 12 or 13 meetings, right. If you, if you, you know, expand past that, right. And, you know, I don't know how many you can do per, per meeting, but, you know, if we start looking at maybe, maybe part of the problem is a red, I mean, I, I don't know, a redefinition of hyperledger. I don't know. Right. Like, because, you know, badging is an interesting idea. Right. I mean, you'd have to kind of completely change the uh, change, change what it, change how people look at projects. Right. And have a definition of what sort of badges actually mean. Right. Because essentially, again, I go back to like Apache. Right. You know, so Apache has tons of projects. Right. Obviously, they don't have a TSC. They have a top level thing. But then, it, you know, fundamentally, everybody has their own you know, the large projects all have their own, you know, committee, right, per, per kind of project. But they, but essentially, they have a set of criteria that you must meet such that, right, if I go in and use Apache code, you know, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be able to say that Apache code met these things, right, everything's been licensed, the IP is free, blah, 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 there's, you know, it's maintained or whatever. Clearly, me, I go check things like, because we're used to open source, as some of the people are here, I checked when the last main, you know, when the last commit was for something, right, to see if something's actually actively maintained or whatever, before I might choose to use it. You know, we, so we had that kind of in Hyperledger, right? We went further, because we had, like, an Apache doesn't go advertise, right? Like, you don't go to the Apache home site and go see, you know, here's our greenhouse, or here's our 10 projects, right? There's like, here's a list of projects. Here's the other incubator projects, right? And then they have Apache Con, right? Where everybody gets to highlight their, their wares. Like, so we, on the one side, we kind of want to be that because we're moving away from a single unified mission. But on the other side, we want to go back to what we, we want to sort of like stay where we were originally, which was, hey, here's a set of components that we have vetted, you know, of, of that, that meet the criteria of blockchain for business. And here's a set of stuff. And here's these ones that, that we're kind of promoting. So I don't know if I'm really asking questions to making a statement of fact, but it seems like we're trying to do something in between the two. And I'm not really sure that you can ever really do that. All right, thank you. Thought provoking.
Any reactions? Otherwise, I think we, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to make of what you say. I think you have an interesting point, Gary. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know what yeah. to do. Yeah, well, I guess I guess where I'm going at is like you mean bad, like for example, badging, right? You could move to like if you if you went with a model of badging, right? Instead of having like you know active whatever whatever it may be, and maybe to the point of, you know, when you earn, there's criteria for badges, right? And a specific badge may get you, you know, additional additional benefits. You're still kind of fighting for stuff, but maybe those are the better ones. Right. Like maybe that maybe you have to get some level of badge before we'll do a security scan for your stuff or something like that. Right. I mean, maybe part of the badge system is, you know, what services Hyperledger will provide for a, a, a product project beyond the fact of, you know, we have the governance rules and whatever. And maybe that. Maybe that sort of sorts the problem, I, I, I guess it's just, you know what I mean? We had a, a Hyperledger. I don't know. You can't have. <laughs> Or we need to go to a model that just says, you know, we're going to stop, like, you know, we have to really vet projects. We have to go back to a real thing that's going to really vet projects and see what value these projects actually bring to our overall mission and have a yeah. committee that is, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, those are the kind of two extremes to me. Anything can come, but there's a status of how you earn criteria and maybe you get some additional benefits, you know, funded by Hyperledger for those, you know, as you hit badges. And maybe that just keeps the whole game like doesn't matter whether you're active, whatever. Or on the other side, you know, you kind of have this more stuff of we're, we're actually more properly vetting what actually gets admitted, you know, into Hyperledger that fits under what we as the technical, the elected technical leaders believe is the core mission. I don't know. Those are the two extremes as I see them. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the question that was raised by Arun is whether, you know, should we, uh, should we look at this question of like, you know, recurrent reviews, whether we need to do something different than what we do today. I mean, to a certain extent, it's been pointed out, you know, the quarterly reports are a form of review, but they probably don't satisfy everyone. Or, so again, back to my goal for today, we have two more questions. So there's one more after that. Uh, you know, should we take that as a as a question we really want to answer? How do we say no? It's okay with everything I, else we have. It's good enough. I don't know. I think based on the discussions we've been having, we sort of should. Um, okay. Just you know, and I think one one thing that's come clear is whatever solutions we come up with, it's not you get to this level and you're good, you know, it's, you must continue to meet the criteria to, to maintain that level, not just once you get there, you know, you earn this badge, now you don't have to worry about it again. No, you earn this badge, now you have to keep showing that you deserve the badge or, you know, whatever the status is or, or however we come out. But I think that's one of the flaws in our current system is once you get okay. there, that, hard to, you know, pull it away. All right, so so Mark is in favor. I'm also in favor of adding that question. So anybody opposing this? Otherwise we can just move on to the next one. There's one more. We touched on this a little bit, I guess, but. Angelo. Uh, yeah, I don't know, just a few, few seconds to connect to what uh, Gary said that uh, if I understood it co co correctly, because it was breaking a, a little bit and I found if, if, if it's that I found it uh, very interesting because it, it, to me it pointed to something more foundational. Uh, it, what, what Hyperledger wants to be, which kind of philosophy is around uh, uh, Hyperledger, if I got it correctly. And to me, this sounds um, a more a question that we should answer before everything else. If that what is if that is what Gary was uh, was uh, was pointing to, just this. Yeah. I think this is. Uh, actually, you, I could have just said one line. Yeah, that's a good thing, Angela. I could have just said one line instead of my spiel, but you know I like to talk. So yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but that's not the question at hand. The question at hand is you know whether we should introduce a mechanism for regular review of project. So Mark said, yeah, we should do that. And I agree. And, you know, I was asking if anybody objects to it, but I guess not. No, I think it's a good idea. 
So let's move on. Uh, I'll put Gary's question aside, although I do understand it's an interesting one. Um, let's try to tackle the last one, which has to do with, you know, this question I was talking about, the charter. Arun, you want to talk to this? We have to go quick now. Um, so this is one of the hard questions and difficult ones to bring up because of many things which happened in, on the chart. So this is about um, like how to, uh, what to do if current top level project does not meet this chart, charter goals. So the proposal which would fit in, which which would fit in, fit in here is that we agree that um, these rules or whatever we come up with new set of rules, the old projects they did not know, probably we should give them some extra time or we should understand from them, hey, if you did not meet your charter goals, then what are those problems that made you not reach those? And yeah, this probably is to look at the current projects in special manner, that's all. So it seems to me that if we had, you know, if we had a regular review mechanism as part of that, it makes sense to look at the charter and then decide to do if there's deviation. I do appreciate the bring this up because it was also embedded in some level in the rollover uh, question that was raised before where there's this idea is like, well, some projects said they would support multiple framework, they end up not doing it. What do we do about this? And so I do think it's an interesting question. I don't know, you know, I don't know that it needs to be handled diff independently, but it should be embedded at least in the uh, review Although it doesn't say what to do. Yeah, this one is more like what to do if. So yeah, I guess it's a good question. Anybody wants to speak up to this? So I'm in favor of keeping it. Yep, Mark? I was gonna say, we've talked around it a few times in, in different discussions, so it sounds like it's something everyone's thinking of. And so, yeah, we should, you know, make sure it's included in the other discussions at least. All right, thank you. We'll add it to the list. And, you know, there's no commitment to, to we could uh, down the line, look at some of these issues and say, you know what, forget it. And, you know, it just means that from a formal process, we just add those to the, t to the decision log and as we move forward in next calls, we look at them and hopefully offline as well between calls and try to make progress so that we can eventually get to a formal resolution for every one of those. And, you know, one resolution is, can be to drop it. So let's add it. Uh, I don't know what to do with Gary's point. I feel like this is a question for Brian, but uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably, probably worth a longer conversation than we have in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely will take uh, it back. Oh. Yeah, so uh, my interpretation of, of Gary's point was sort of on, you know, and Gary, you know, correct me if I'm just way off base here, which is entirely possible. Um, it's about sort of how much we want to cultivate the garden, right? So Apache is is kind of like, you know, a wild meadow if we want to use the analogy, right? You know, sort of like a lot of things can grow, um, you know, and maybe there's not as much uh, gardening. And I, you know, to continue the metaphor, I guess it's a question of how much gardening, you know, we want to happen in Hyperledger. Um, and this, you know, this, this question has, has existed since obviously the very beginning of the project, right? Um, is, is that a, a correct understanding, Gary? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good, I think it's really a good starting point, right? It's really, do we go back to kind of that sort of mission, right? And, and I guess where I was really getting at is there's a lot of suggestions here and, but without a context or kind of, you know, mission statement to align them with, it becomes very difficult, right? To make the kind of choices, right? Because you could see a clear path. In my head, I can see a clear path through some of the decisions 
if they're tied to, if they're rooted in, in some core principle. And, and I think we're trying to deviate from our core principle sometimes, and that's where these, anyway, that's, that's, that's the take, yeah. All right, so maybe there's a question about, you know, what sort of core principles have they changed? We seem to, you know, we, we definitely, I mean, Hyperledger went through some evolution for sure, you know, and uh, I don't know. All right, we're almost out of time, you know. Uh, just quickly going back to the agenda. <clears throat> I think we're done for the list of questions, right? Aru, did I miss any? Go ahead. No, not with the questions, but um, sorry to, I mean, I wanted to just say sorry to Bobby for not bringing that topic up. I know you wanted to present about learning uh, working groups uh, uh, presentation and we should have put that as a first topic here. Oh, thank you, yeah, no so worries. <laughs> No, but so let's be clear about this. So we have invited all the groups and uh, Tracy took the action to item to reach out to all the SIGs and all to uh, to invite them to the TSE. If anybody wants time, they should just let me know or add it to the agenda. It's better to communicate to me so I know what to expect. But uh, <clears throat> so Bobby, the invitation is open and uh, let me know when you want to do it and we'll just schedule it. Great, thank you, I will reach out. Thank you. So I just wanted to point out the rest on the agenda. So we didn't hear back from Darman, he's not here. I don't know what those items were. The other ones are mostly for me, you know, so I don't want them to, to fall off the face uh, of earth. Uh, uh, and, and so, I just want to keep those, doesn't necessarily mean I expect us to discuss any of those other points. I think, you know, allowing new projects in the hyperledger is this question we've talked about, you know, do we have gaps? So what do we do about them? And uh, the other one is the working group responsibilities. I, I didn't know if actually we want, we, we still have to do more than we have done with the decision to invite working groups to come to the TSC and present. So, but this is what to me, this is about. We can talk about this next week. We'll have a call next week and hopefully we have put our, you know, uh, all these issues in shape and we can start tackling them. Thank you very much for joining today. Have a good week. Talk to you next week.